Today we've got a very fun comparison, four drivers from the past five years, and we're going to show you why they're so successful, why they're so popular, and why they're so effective for so many golfers. Jackie's going to hit some shots, and Trackman will help us out a little bit today. Golfers, if you like this video, make sure you leave a comment, say which of these four drivers is your favorite, and then subscribe to the channel. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Jackie Johnson, Master Fitter at Second Swing Minnetonka. Fun test today, four drivers picked by Jackie, um, most popular drivers that are used in our inventory, kind of from the past five years or so. Um, so we've got four different brands here. Um, I'll let Jackie kind of explain her favorite things about each driver, but uh, just Jackie, first of all, what makes these four models? Uh, so we've got the Ping G400 Max, we've got the Callaway Maverick, TaylorMade M2, and then the Titleist TS2. So what makes these uh, so effective and um, really are a great choice for so many golfers? Yeah, with all four of these clubs, uh, they've just been really performing really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and they continue to be a good choice for those golfers that are looking for a budget-friendly mm -hmm. option. So uh, you asked me, like, how do they perform against, like, some of the top yeah. uh, you know, drivers out there, especially yeah. in 2021 this year? I'd say, obviously, there's advantages to new. There, there just oh, yeah. is. Technology changes. There's some things that you're going to get more out of a newer club. But overall, like, these are still a really good option, and that can get you uh, in a tighter dispersion circle, mm -hmm. max distance, all those things that can really just help your game out. Yeah, and one thing we should note, too, with all these drivers, you still have adjustable hosel technology yeah. with each of them that can help you fine-tune um, the lie angle and the loft that you need. Um, but then, as you said, you know, you don't get the brand new club head. You don't, you know, you lose a little bit of life potential with it, right? Because these are already a little bit used and they're going to wear a little faster because of that. But the, the technology speaks for itself. I mean, these clubs are uh, tremendous uh, and they have the forgiveness there too. So with these four clubs, Jackie, um, let's just kind of touch a little bit on golf shafts here. because It's not going to be the same. So yep. um, just, and then, you know, overall the test today, um, how are we going to conduct this one? Yeah, uh, all of the heads have the stock shafts that they came out with, mm -hmm. so a little bit different in weight. Um, like the TS2 has the Kirokaji 50 gram, right? And then the Maverick has a 60 gram even flow, right? Mm -hmm. So like the gram difference is a little bit different, yeah. but um, all stock shafts are what they came out with. So, you know, we figured test out the stock shaft they originally came out with yeah. and kind of see what the differences are. Um, you know, the other thing is, is, you know, you're talking about life of the club. Uh, for sure, that's a big thing. I think when I'm fitting someone for a used club, obviously my recommendation is always to get one that is in pretty good shape. Oh, yeah. Because if you get something that's, you know, below average and you're thinking, oh, this is a great deal, that's where, you know, the shaft and the club head itself is probably really worn out, yeah. right? So you might lose a little life on the club with it being more used. So, mm -hmm. um Always having good condition club as well when they're mm -hmm. older is a bonus. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about secondswing.com actually is, you know, with our humongous inventory, we post on the product page on the website, you can see the, the pictures of that specific club. Yep. So it's not just we have a generic photo of, you know, an M2 driver, for example. You have uh, the photo of each specific M2 driver that we have in our inventory is available for you to see. So you know exactly what club that you are looking at to purchase. But, okay. We've got the four drivers. Yeah. You ready to hit some shots, Jack? And Let's go. Them? That one's good. Yeah. Looking over at the impact location, it seems like you're hitting the toe. Most of Sounds the time. Sounds to be, that's a theme today. Yep. Pulled. How many is I like way better. All right, it's so Jackie G400 Max. Um, look at, I mean, give me the, uh, you know, the feedback on the look and the sound and the feel of that driver. I know. 
that's a pin driver, so yeah. we kind of know how the sound is. Yeah, feel-wise, I mean, it feels good. It absorbs the mm -hmm. shock of any bad hit, whether you hit off the heel, toe. Like, it's not going to feel like that vibration up your yeah. arm, right? So, I mean, ping drivers always feel good to me. I think the biggest thing for myself is that I notice that anytime yeah. I have a ping driver, I always have this tendency to just pull it. Yeah. And, you know, it's got a little bit, you know, more of a offset at address. So I think right away, like anytime I get it in my hand, I'm immediately... You're thinking pull, yes. kind of, yeah. It's and in my so, it's in my head, so... Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, you didn't try to fight it, you just kind of swung. You yeah. Know? Um, so interesting though, we'll note that for, you know, comparing the other clubs here, because then yeah. we'll see, you know, how that, you know, maybe there's a bias in there, a little bit of a draw bias. Um, I know there was like the SFT head um, with the G400, but maybe there's a little bit in there that is subtle as well. Um, but how about, you know, distance wise, are these distance numbers kind of similar? I know that spin's probably a little bit low maybe, um, but the, the, I mean, 231 total, a little over 200 carry. How does that stack up to maybe what you're used to? Yeah, a little bit shorter mm -hmm. than I'm used to. Um, I think potentially it could be on some of these there was a little bit low spin and that's just because yeah. you're kind of pulling it left. So yeah. my club head speed's a little bit lower, maybe just confidence wise. I'm not, because yeah. I know that I'm pulling them, that I'm mm -hmm. like, hesitant a little yeah. bit with it so um yeah i mean the other thing is is that you know ping has a little bit heavier head weight right so some of that speed could be due to that too could be yes. so when you're talking about the aerodynamics of the club head and some of the other models we're going to try yeah, yeah that is you know a factor for sure for sure well i mean for what it's worth this is a pretty tight dispersion circle now it's obviously left of the target, yeah. uh, but the actual consistency of it is pretty solid. So there, there is that to note. I mean, your smash factor deviation number, or standard deviation number is just 0.01. Yeah. So it's, it's a consistent swing. It's just a consistent pull, I guess. Um, but all right, so next club here, let's go to, let's go to Callaway Maverick. Different sound for sure. More of like a thud to it. Yep. Yeah, it's just more of like a thud. It's like, yeah. Versus the like echoey, hollowy thing that Ping has. That was an efficient strike, though, right there. One point five. Toey. It might work though. Yeah. That one must have been pretty good. Well, that's a good ball. Oh yeah. That was good. That one is pounded. There. Nice. Okay. Okay, so Jackie, Callaway Maverick. Yeah. Um, I noticed a difference in sound quite a bit. And one thing we didn't note yet, 10 and a half degrees on loft, all these standard yep. setting. So um, in, in that sense, apples to apples comparison. Um, what did you think about this, the, the feel, the, the sound? I thought there was more of a thud with Maverick here versus Pink's kind of more of a Loud. echoey, louder kind of crash to it. Yeah, um, I like the feel of the Maverick maybe a little bit better and I honestly, I, mean, I was hitting it a little bit more square in the face, mm -hmm. hit three really good ones down the middle. So like, obviously that's gonna make yeah. it feel better, right? But um, I, I like it a little bit better at a dress. You know, it's more square to what I'm used to. So yeah, I mean. The like pain, you're not seeing as much offset. Right, exactly. Compared to the, the G400 Max, yeah. Right, yeah. Fair enough, and I mean, we can look at the numbers here and you're actually swinging slower with Maverick, but then yeah. ball speed went up, you got crazy efficiency there. Um, and then we'll look at the total distance by, you can just look at the map, you can see the distance that you gained. And yeah, I mean, basically nine yards both ways. Um, and, and I think also hit it higher in the air too, which um, could give you some extra distance as well. I think too, something to note, just like if you scroll over to the smash factor, um, mm -hmm. obviously really good when we're talking about like being at that 1.5 mark. Uh, I think, you know, even though I'm swinging not as fast as I normally, we've been filming a lot of videos, so I'm right, a little yeah. tired. But even with that, it's good to note that like, 
even though I'm swinging less, I'm still hitting it as far. Right, right? yeah. So my efficiency there is still, even though I'm swinging four miles an hour less than I'm used to, I'm hitting it square in the face, therefore yeah. I'm getting the most out of it. Yeah, Some, I mean, it's important to know for anybody, you know, if, you're, if maybe someone's trying to really increase their club speed or swing really hard, or maybe they're thinking they go up to a tee shot and they have to hit a certain distance, yep. like I'm gonna swing as hard as I can, but I'm guilty of that myself. But at the end of the day, it's more about the efficiency, hitting yeah. it in the center of the face, hitting that spot on the club face where you're gonna get the most ball speed. And so, I mean, you hit more ball speed, or you achieve more ball speed despite swinging a mile an hour slower. Yeah. So again, another, uh, just a piece of something to note that, you know, swing speed is not the only thing uh, in terms of generating distance. So, um, okay, we can go to, let's go to TaylorMade M2 now. That's a good ball. A little spinny. Just a little bit lower of center on the face, but. Try to compensate for that. Interesting. We're like going left to right as we go through this test right now. Yeah. Of like, ping was left, Taylor means on the right right now. So the Taylor made M2, we can bring up the map, we can bring up the numbers. How did that one look and feel? You've got, so I'm just looking at the map. You have two, I think probably your two straightest tee shots of the day up there um, but it looks like it's just not quite the distance that maverick gave you yeah there's like i don't know what it is i think it might be the shaft feels kind of dead mm -hmm. uh, i think this is the you know when we were talking about earlier this is the heaviest i believe is it no 50 grams okay so i'm definitely swinging um a little bit faster oh, than yeah, the other true. two mm -hmm. but it feels dead that's okay. how i would describe it Interesting. like feels like i don't have as much pop as the other two and this one is a little bit older, yeah. so talk about 2016. Yeah. So that's where, you know, in drivers, especially like with the shaft in general, like if this has been hit a lot, you can start to see the shaft start to like deteriorate yeah. as you, you, sure. you hit them over and over again. So um, it'd be interesting to see if we got like a brand new shaft in here, like how that would react, but yeah. it definitely just feels a little bit Interesting, Dead. interesting. So in terms of the, you know, the feel that you're, I guess, commenting on is more about the, the golf shaft rather than the club head. Um, right. So, so now another thing I wanted to ask you about is the club head, that look at on the crown, that like white kind yeah. of stripe with kind of a different shape there. Is that something that distracts you or are you able to no. go over that easily or? No, I mean, the club head itself feels very similar to the Sim Max that I play. So like the feel felt fine. Yeah. It just, the shaft feels. Okay, so it's more of a yeah. swinging thing. Yep. Um, but so t what TaylorMade's done with their crown on the drivers is they've kind of gone away, like they started with that really thick white stripe that you're seeing and then mm -hmm. they've sort of almost condensed that. They've added different colors on there. They've put like some blue in there most recently, but and it's been gray. So they've kind of, um, kind of hidden almost that stark contrast that they used to have there. Obviously going back 10 years ago, it was like a white, completely white club head, like R11, but they've taken some of that away now. Um, so it's interesting to see that's kind of what their look was, you know, five years ago, and now it's much more reserved than that. So I didn't know if you had a thought on that, being someone that does play TaylorMade, but just yeah, a, I mean, just a note. Look in the club heads to me, I don't really. Yeah. I mean, I and just, that's certainly you know I think I don't want to say you're unique in that, but I know there's a lot of people yeah. that you know they if they look at the club head and they know right away by looking at the crown, I can't play that drive. Yeah. You know. Um, I, yeah, I'm not like that. I so, just get up there and swing it. But which is I, good, I think, because then, then when you do get fit for a driver or get yeah. fit for anything, you're you're open to everything. Right. right. So, and I mean, there's uh, the possibility that you're missing out on a club because you just don't like the way it looks. You know, I'd, and that's a confidence thing too that is played into it. So, um, M2 though, um, again, these two drives, uh, I think the straightest of the day. Uh, then you had one over here and then two right. Uh, Notably, we were looking at impact location here. I'm going to try to actually bring that up here. Um, impact location of your M2 drives. You were catching it rather low on the face compared to the other two drivers, right? So each of these, you had a little bit lower on the face. Yep. 
And then these other ones with the Maverick, you were catching a little bit higher. Something to note there. So that's probably the reason we had some higher spin with the M2 and eventually then less distance. But the other thing to note with the M2 is that when looking at the numbers here, it didn't drop off that far necessarily for you know, hitting the ball lower on the face. It's obviously, it's about a, what, 15 or, or I guess 10 yard difference. Yep. Ball is straight in the fairway, lose 10 yards of distance. Um, but obviously, if you hit that thing in the center of the face, we're pro probably in a different conversation here. Okay, next club, Titleist TS2, really popular one. Yes. Ooh. That one was interesting. Huh. Oh. oh, that one's good. That's a little gear effect. Yep. That's a good ball, too. Wow. That one was good. I feel like those five were the most consistent of the day. Well, now, look. that's before looking at any of the data, but it just seems like overall, yeah, I, the Spurs Circle isn't the small, I mean, the smallest is actually the G400 Max, which is ironically the one that, you know, I know yeah. certainly isn't the straightest, but it's the smallest circle. TS2, I think consistency-wise, if we look at, like, your your spin and stuff, it ha I, I would, that's my guess, is that we find, like, ball speed and stuff is most consistent. Maybe not. It's actually not. Maybe not. No. Ball speed's not the most consistent. Um, spin rate's not. The Maverick's actually. Maverick, wow. Uh, carry's not. Total's not. Ah, all right, I'm wrong. I don't know. It just seemed like all of those were. You have five fairways hit um, with that. I also do with M2. So, um, so I what? I guess, yeah. Give me your feedback on TS2. Yeah, I think that. the TS2 felt the best. Okay. It just, I mean, and. Before I went to TaylorMade, I used to play Titleist, so maybe it's partially mm -hmm. I'm used to the feel. But I think I mean, TS2 is pro one of the most popular when it comes yeah. in the last couple of year models. Oh, yeah. Um, they just perform really well, even though, you know, obviously the dispersion circle doesn't show it. Um, if I were to hit 100 shots, I would venture to guess the TS2 is probably going to be hitting the fairway pretty much every single time. Yeah. And ju that's just for, like, me fitting a lot of, you know, people into the TS2, it, it just, TS2 gears a lot of attention when it comes to inexpensive club. I mean, you're looking at 250, 275 yeah. for this club. So it's- It's just oh, two, three years old now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great price and it performs. Mm -hmm. um, I might not hit it the farthest. I obviously hit the Maverick a little bit better. Yeah. But when you're talking about, you know, we're only hitting five shots with each, you know? So I, I think sometimes people as well, when we're, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, these tests are, yeah. for the sake of time, we're not going to be hitting 100 balls, yeah. you know. Um, but I think the, what you're, what I've noticed with Titleist is so over the years, going back to the 910, 913, kind of the older ones when, like, I was in middle school, high school, those were um, really spinny. And yeah. so they have gradually over time taken that spin down. And with the TS series is when I really noticed, okay, it's, matching or if not better than the competitors. Yeah. Um, whereas before, I think they were probably a little bit higher compared to the, the, ta the TaylorMades, the Callaways, the Pings. But now they've really brought that spin down and are competitive in that sense. So they've always had that accuracy piece, yeah. but then that spin is now a little bit lower in general, at least for like when I've been hitting them. And the result has been that accuracy plus that distance too. Yeah, and I think like for, you know, mid to high handicappers, 10 years ago, most people didn't hit Titleist. Because mm -hmm. for that reason, I mean, you couldn't hit them as far as some yeah. of the other. Yeah, yeah. Well, and distance is always, yeah. especially, I mean, yeah, it seems like especially now even, but it's always been, you know, people are hungry for distance. That's just how it, how it is. Um, now, in, in this test, Tylus wasn't the farthest drive or the farthest driver. Um, but if you want to talk a combination of accuracy and distance, um, Tylus is right there, a little bit farther than the M2. Um, you have the Maverick, which was a little bit farther overall, I think, but just had a little bit of a lean left there. So it, it's, it is a, it's a 
pretty darn good test here because there are a different way, a lot of different ways you go here, right? Your two straightest day drives of the day were M2. TS2 might be the best combination of all of them. Maverick's probably the furthest. And then your ping is the smallest dispersion, probably the most consistent in terms of the shot shape and things. Yeah, um, I think with so. the ping, if we were to, if I were to open up the club face a little bit, yeah. it, it might, it very might well be the winner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so let's say someone, you know, this data is up here from a customer. You've got that map, you've got these numbers on the right. Is there a choice that you would recommend or how would you proceed from there? Well, I think all of them definitely could be adjusted mm -hmm. uh, from, but you know, top three, Maverick, Ping, TS2, uh, adjusting them to fit exactly where I wanna be up here. Yeah. That's where I would start. I think when I take a look at the Ping, Ping has the tightest dispersion circle. So I'm hitting it to left. So if I can try to flatten that out a little bit okay. uh, and lower the loft just a titch to try to get it to be a little bit straighter. And then, you know, Maverick, same thing, right? So mm -hmm. I had a couple that I pulled. So if I had flattened that out as well, maybe try to get that a little bit straighter too would be a good combo. Okay, well, let's, let's try that. Let's try to maybe flatten the line a little bit and see what happens. Let's do it. Look better. You mean this will go lower too for what it's worth, yeah. right? So. Oh yeah, that was good. But that was a really good drive. Uh, okay. Yeah, you didn't seem very confident about that one. And yeah, it, I didn't know where out. that was gonna go. <laughs> that should that says something, I think. Well, you certainly straighten things out here. Yeah. You're feeling it now. Yeah. There. Twas. Well, we certainly straightened things out. And I wonder on average distance, it's gotta be up there with Maverick, right? So we, yeah. so the adjustment weight was minus one. Is that, so it's basically, I don't think it's actually a perfect uh, drop of a whole degree but it's more or less playing nine and a half degrees yeah. versus 10 and a half for the other ones. But the face is open a little bit. Result here is, you know, I think now probably the straightest and tightest dispersion circle are close to They're The size of the circle is actually really similar here yeah. between G400 max standard, G400 max minus one. Distance wise, carry of 210, total 238.1. And it's, I mean, just barely shorter than Maverick, but I think that optimization looks to be pretty darn good there. Scroll over to the height once. Oh yeah, that's true. This one, I'm just and curious. one thing to note, you know, dropping that lower in loft, you're going to get less height. So it, now the question for you is, are these, is that acceptable being down at 72 feet in the air um, versus actually you actually increase your height overall compared to the previous yeah. G400 max setting, but is that enough height for you? compared to, you know, you hit the M2 higher, you hit others higher than that as well. Well, I think, you know, when you're taking a look at fitting someone into a driver, obviously, you know, you, you first of all, you don't, you want to make sure you're not like, it's just going like mm -hmm. know, too low, right? Yeah. Um, in this instance, I mean, it's not, I mean, you probably like it to be a little bit higher, yeah. but overall I'm not losing that carry distance. And that's the thing that when you're taking a look at, you know, those pieces when yeah. you're making these adjustments, making sure that you're not losing height and carry right. at the same time, that's really gonna bring that optimization piece down, right? Yep. But when you're looking at that adjustment I made to make it straighter, I'm still carrying this 209, yeah. which is the second you know, longest beyond mm -hmm. the Maverick. Right. So it's not like I'm losing, you know, I, I'm hitting it 195 and it's rolling out 40 yards. Right. I am still getting that optimal piece there. Yeah, that's a good point. That's, um, that's something, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, the reason that we kind of talk about height is because for certain players that there's a certain height window to reach kind of your maximum carry. And so um, here, you know, maybe decreasing the height per se, I mean, it, on, you know, you, you dropped it, I mean, compared to the Maverick, it's three feet, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, not a big deal because your carry distance was still more or less maximized yeah. with this new setting. So um, interesting. So. I mean, I'm sure people watching this when they first saw the G400 Max uh, tee shots in the standard setting going left, you're probably like, nah, it's probably not gonna be the answer here. They still have the adjustable hosel settings here though on these drivers. 
and you can take advantage of them and optimize your game. And now you've got, I think, probably the winner of this yeah. test. I think optimally, if I was fitting someone right now and I saw this, I'd say, yeah, the G400 is definitely the top gun. And then, honestly, what I would do is probably go to more of 11 and a half head and then loft that down mm, for whoever mm -hmm. I was fitting. So that way we're getting a little bit more height and maybe a little bit more max carry distance too. It would be interesting to see that as well. I think sure. you're going to see it probably that, similar so the, numbers. The higher stated loft, you know, you can open that up, yeah. but I'll, that's decreasing the loft of the stated driver. So let's say it's a 12 degree driver, drop that down to about 11, but that's also opening that face. So yeah. you can maybe get a little bit even more height. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of a club fitting video, a little bit of a club comparison <laughs> video, kind of all in one here. But interesting test here. I think we got some good shots up there. We got a lot of fairways hit from Jackie here. Um, <laughs> so uh, again, for golfers interested in a used driver, um, these are kind of the most popular ones that we've been fitting uh, customers into in our used drivers, at least according to Jackie here. She's been doing it all year. So um, I mean, this is, this is good stuff. And I think people will learn a lot. I think there's a lot of winners up here. I mean, there's not really a, a loser. A lot of good options, a lot of distance, a lot of forgiveness here. Um, the next thing for golfers that are interested, come into second swing, and then someone like Jackie can fit you into one, uh, right? So uh, any, any other thoughts? Otherwise, this was great stuff, and I, we have no other recommendation. Otherwise, come in. Yeah, I think uh, just a few, just one more thing here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, when it, you know, some people might say, well, why would you go to ping versus, I, I don't necessarily think that, you know, this could be an hour-long video, right? right, of like what a fitting is, but you... Could, I could have taken any of those clubs and made them adjust them to make the dispersion circle a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, shaft uh, could have oh, maybe yeah. gone a different route there. But I think that just a quick little touch there and yeah. a little adjustment on one club. Right. And I did that because the ping was the smallest dispersion, but way left. So just showing that that yeah. adjustment can really be a beneficial piece to getting something that's in the last couple of years of technology. Right, I mean, that's just scratching the surface of what an yeah. actual fitting is like here. We, those are, they're hour long. You come in, you can test multiple different heads. Um, and then you can, you know, like we said, you can make adjustments to all these drivers if you wanted to. Um, for the sake of time, for the sake of the comparison, we've yep. got a winner here. Um, we've got four really good options here. So Jackie, thank you for joining, hitting the tee shots today, giving your insight and giving the recommendation on the fitting as well. So I think a lot of golfers will take note of that uh, in the future when they're trying to pick a new club. Thank you.